It's that time again. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Happy Camper Radio Show, the only place to be when you're ready to talk camping. Camping is what we're about. Camping is all we talk about. What do you do to plan the perfect camping trip? It should also include choosing the perfect camp site, wherever you go camping. When you plan a camping trip, do you go that extra mile to reserve the spot that is going to enhance your camping experience? We'll tell you what you need to do. Got some great pointers on the show today. Daniel's back with us, and we'll be talking with him momentarily on this edition of Happy Camper Radio. Stick around for it. Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. And, of course, the Happy Camper Radio Show can be heard all around the world by great listeners just like yourself. You can find us in the iTunes Store and Podbean, Myra Guide, Stitcher, the BlackBerry Podcast Directory, iHeartRadio, Google Play Music, and now on Spotify. Tell your friends to tune in to Happy Camper Radio today. You can get in touch with us here at the Happy Camper Radio Show anytime by calling 404-537-2267. That's 404-537-CAMP. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker, add us to Circles on Google+, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Go to www.happycamperradio.com. You'll find all of our social media icons right there on the homepage. You click on any one of them and you connect up with us. And when you do, what happens, Daniel? We give them a shout on the show, right? Ah! Hey, nothing ever changes, I'm sure. (laughs) (laughs) Well, right now we want to say hello, first of all, to Walter Fort, Evan Bartleson of Atlanta, Georgia, Robert Burton of Augusta, Georgia. They like us on Facebook. To the folks at RV Raider, Donna Owen of California. David Morrison of Brisbane. We have Richard Burgess of the United Kingdom. And finally, to the folks at KOA Care Camps in Ogensburg, New York. They're following us this week on Twitter. Thank you all so very much for joining us. Glad to have you on board. More importantly, thank you for being a part of this great Happy Camper Radio family. Want to be a guest on the program? We'd love to have you. Get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P at happycamperradio.com. Well, Daniel, good to have you back here in the studio. It's good to be back. Uh, you got your iPad there or is your iPhone? Are you playing yep. games or are you looking up your next uh, camping destination? Re- reserving a spot. Really? Where? Um, Probably at a place up the road, uh, Fort Yargo. Yeah, tell us about that. Uh, now, you and your wife went there, when it, was it last week? It was a couple weeks ago. Okay. And you surveyed the, the landscape, should I say? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, they had a lot of uh, activities you can do in the spring. They have um, stand-up paddle boards. I- I've never done that, so I'd like to try that out. And they had a bunch of other stuff that you could rent. And they had a little beach, and you could, like, swim um, at the lake. And we went over to where the campground is and checked out the spots, and they were they were really very nice. And this is something we're going to be talking about on the show today. And I'm glad you took the opportunity to go up there and do just that because you have this this used pop-up. I want to call it a new pop-up because it looked like it was very well taken care of. Yeah, definitely. And I think you got a pretty good deal on it. Mm-hmm. All right. So you're going to be hopefully going on a camping trip up there very soon with your better half. Yeah. All right. And did you by chance locate a campsite that you're going to be utilizing while you're there. Uh, we always like to get a site near the bathroom because we don't have one in our um, in our pop up. I mean, I know they have like they have ones, but I, I'd rather not fool with it. I'd rather just go to the uh, go to the bathhouse, you know, go to the bathroom and and take, take your a shower, shower and yeah. all that other yeah, good and stuff, right? And, and stuff, meet yeah. a lot of good folks right there in the bathhouse. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I always make good people when I'm in there shaving. Yeah, I don't know what oh, it is. You know, just... Always make sure to wear shower shoes when you, yes, when you go yes. to take a shower. That's very Absolutely. important. Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, here's today, Daniel, and I, I have talked about this on so many occasions. When I plan a camping trip, almost every time, every time, the rain enters the forecast and puts a damper on my plans. And this week is no exception. I should be in the North Georgia mountains right now. We had planned a trip a couple weeks ago and there was eight or 10 guys. We were all going to go. And then all of a sudden somebody had this come up. Somebody had that come up and it got down to just two of us here. 
And we were supposed to leave Sunday, and we, we know what the forecast was Sunday. Yeah, all what rain looked, all day. And what did we have this morning? Uh, rain, of course. Well, we talked about this on Saturday. I got with my buddy, and, you know, we were going to go on up there. And then we just decided, well, you know, it's just the two of us, and we're getting a late start. It's a two-hour drive up there, and then you got like an hour or so to get set up. Mm-hmm. And we just decided maybe we'll just take an extended weekend. We'll try this again, and I would camp locally. Right. Well, here's what I did today. Uh-huh. I went over to Georgia Stone Mountain Park, and I did today what you did about a week ago. I went over there to look up the perfect campsite for myself. I was going to actually throw everything in the truck and head on over there tomorrow. Now, that, that campsite, the campground, should I say, is only about 10 minutes away from where we are. Mm-hmm. And I got over there. It's cold. It's windy. There's only like three people, only three primitive campers. Now, there's about a dozen or two people with travel trailers and pop-ups and that. But there was only like three primitive campers in the whole campground that I could see. And all I saw was the tents just blowing in the wind. And with all the things that I bring to camp, and you know I bring the whole shooting match when I go. Yes, you do. Right. Okay. I don't need to be chasing salt shakers down the road. I don't need to be chasing uh, cans that are rolling down the street. Or anything yeah. like that. You so, should uh, you should tell people what happened last time you were at Stone Mountain, didn't you? Uh, oh, we, didn't someone we lose we, a uh, awning or something? Or a or, lot of people lost a lot of stuff. We had a microburst in the middle of the night, about three o'clock in the morning, just come strolling on through there, and I mean, it picked up anything in its path. Of course, you know, I had the tent staked down very well. I have those, you know, one foot long tent stakes. Mm-hmm. I don't. So that mess with those little ones that come with the tent that uh, when you purchase it, I go out and I buy those extra long tent stakes for situations just like this. And our tent, of course, was just flapping in the wind. But I mean, I had seen awnings. I had seen uh, canopies. I've seen lawn chairs. I've seen everything go flying through the air that morning. Into the lake. (laughs) Into the lake and all over the place. And I also saw a lot of people just picking up what they had throwing it in their hatchback, throwing it in their pickup truck, whatever they, they had, and they were gone. That was the end of camping for them. But, you know, the truth is the world offers so many places for us to pitch our tent and park our RVs. And to do it up right, it's okay to plan a camping trip long distance, but to go ahead and make a reservation and just settle for whatever you have when you get there, you may be highly disappointed. That's why I believe in taking the time to do the research and do what it takes to select the perfect campsite for yourself. I don't know if a lot of people do this, but I take the time to do it. And if at all possible, do like you and I both did. Go there and case out the place in advance to see what's there. For myself, I've got to have almost a perfect level campsite. I don't like sleeping on the side of a hill. Because, you know, then my feet are going to be hanging downward. I don't sleep well that way. But it's a different story for like yourself. You know, when you've got your your pop-up, you roll that in there and you have a way of balancing that out. Mm -hmm. I was able to do that with my truck camper anytime I parked it. Now, there are campgrounds that do require that the camper stay on top of the truck and do not take the camper off, even though they have these hydraulic jacks, these electric jacks, and like the ones I have on mine. But uh, I can understand the safety factor involved, and I've, I've had to deal with that before. But if you don't have a good level site, then you're going to be sleeping on a slant. And I, I don't sleep that well. Uh, I, have that. A, I have a question. Mm-hmm. Um, now, can you – is it – I haven't been to that many uh, um, campgrounds, and I've never really uh, reserved one. We usually go through and just um, drive around and you know whatever looks good. Is what we get, but is it normal that you can reserve, you know, this spot for me that day? Is that a normal thing, or is it just kind of the luck of the draw? That's what I'm trying to well, figure out. Well, it all depends on the site itself. If you go to a place like recreation.gov, mm-hmm. we have a lot of campgrounds all over the country, and if you go to any one of their sites, and just take our featured campground, for example— You can go to that site and you can click on the site itself and there is a site description. 
It'll tell you if it's shaded, if it's partially shaded, if you're out there in the sun, if you're by the lake. It even has a map there for you to look at. And in some cases, there are pictures there. But I always say your best bet to go camping is going to be at your private campgrounds. Mm -hmm. They're privately owned because I have touched on this before. These folks are in the hospitality business and they count on return business. So if you go camping there and you have a great time and you come back and you tell Skip Uber that you had a great time there, then Skip Uber is going to want to go camping. And when I go camping, I'm going to tell a ton of my friends, I'm going to bring it on the program, and I'm going to say, hey, here is a place you ought to go camping. And most likely, they're going to have a website. And if you go to that website, chances are you're going to get an idea of what the campground layout is. For folks like us, and I'm sure for a lot of folks too, if you're going to plan a camping trip, You're going to stay in close proximity to home. I mean, maybe about 100 miles, maybe 150. Uh, You're not going to take a two or three day trip to stay three or four days and then come back. I'm sure some people do that, but I always like to make sure that I have an idea of where I'm going to go camping, what the amenities are, and what's in store for me when I get there. So, you know, it's it if you do your research ahead of time, chances are you're going to find the perfect spot. And if you've been to a place, say, like Fort Yargo, where you're talking about, chances are you saw a spot up there. Maybe you saw a particular campsite and you remembered that campsite number. Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to want to reserve. A lot of those sites looked really good. Um, Speaking of another trip that we're going to be taking um, in October, we're going down to Disney World to uh, camp down there at uh, Fort Wilderness, and all those spots are phenomenal i mean you're gonna walk around again with your mickey mouse ears i am okay um i need a picture of that uh, absolutely um no but there's not a bad spot in there i mean and we got what whatever they had because i know that whole area is just so awesome and it is is the pinnacle of camping really i mean it is awesome Mm -hmm. can't go wrong (laughs) even your public campgrounds and i'm not saying that they're second best because a lot of public campgrounds that i have been to are very well kept. The ones that are operated by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Forestry Service, uh, they have people designated to actually mow the grass and do the trimming and keep things looking sharp for when you go camping. Uh, A lot of them do not operate in the winter months. And in about another two or three weeks, a lot of them are going to be opening up and there's going to be hundreds and thousands of opportunities for people to go camping and, you know, just go on the website and you find a place you want to go to. And you'd be surprised. There are probably some campgrounds very close to home and you can go camping there. Oh, uh, I have another question. What, what about the noise factor? What if you find that perfect spot, but then you've got like a loud group next to you or, you know, screaming kids and everything. I mean, I mean, sometimes there's things you can't have, Boyd. Yeah, and you're right about that. And there's, you know, it, it all comes down to mannerisms, Daniel, yeah. and being respectful for the people camping next to you. A lot of these campgrounds do have quiet hours mm-hmm. and they're usually after 10 o'clock at night. Yeah. And hopefully a lot of these folks are not going to be running around. They're not going to be partying. They're going to be sitting down by the campfire and the most noise they're going to be creating is is singing by the campfire. Mm -hmm. And hopefully the uh, person that's going to do the singing and playing guitar is a talented individual. (laughs) Right. Uh, I don't get into that, but, you know, hey, I enjoy the crackle of the fire. Another problem we used to have when I was was a kid and we'd go camping, we also had a uh, pop-up, but we didn't have a, um, we didn't have an air conditioner on top. So our our camper was pretty quiet and we'd get next to these um, big old, you know, fifth wheels and stuff. And they'd have their air conditioner going all night long, and it was kind of annoying. Well, you know, this is another reason why a lot of your public campgrounds, especially uh, the ones run by the Army Corps of Engineers, they have a campground host who stays there maybe three or four months out of the year, and then another host may move on in. But they close the gate at 10 o'clock at night. And they do that for a reason. I I know there's a safety factor here because if you've got an emergency and you've got to get out, then you've got to wake up the campground host or have him unlock that gate. But you definitely don't want to have 
people driving through there and burning rubber and driving at excessive speeds and playing loud music in the middle of the night. You know, you don't want mm-hmm. any unwanted individuals wandering through the campground, and I understand that. Another problem we used to have, I'm just thinking of all the, like, weird things that have happened. We we uh, we uh set up next to a uh, next to a river, and we didn't know that the frogs were going to be that loud. That Daniel, you mean you got a problem frogs. with the bullfrogs? Oh, my gosh. Those things were so loud. Did it you ask him so... any more named Jeremiah? Uh, uh, <laughs> he was a good friend of mine. <laughs> I'm sure he was. <laughs> I don't mind the bullfrogs. I don't mind the crickets. I don't mind the birds chirping in the middle of the night, and I definitely don't mind the babbling brook. <laughs> yeah, get, that's Get nice. me by the, the creek, and I'm, I'm good to go, Daniel. Yeah. You'd be surprised a lot of people, and this is something whenever you make your reservations online, if you're planning to go camping during the holiday, you better make your reservations far, far in advance, if, especially if you want to be with that crowd. That you get there, you're going to have a problem. If you wait till the last minute and say, well, I'll just go ahead and check in when I get there, you may find out that you're out of luck. <laughs> there are no spots available because you have a lot of people thinking just like you. Well, and um, there are a lot of sites that are specifically designed for, you know, a big trailer as opposed to like a pop-up or a tent. I mean, it all depends on what kind of a power source you need. So, I mean, that's something to consider, too. Well, again, you know, this is why you go to the website to make your reservation. Mm -hmm. And if you do not have the opportunity to go out in advance and explore the campground to see what may be suitable for you— when you choose your site, you'll be able to see what kind of electrical service they provide, what kind of space you have when you back your RV in or pull your RV through. Uh, is it level? Is it going? Is there going to be a tent pad there? Is it shaded? Like I say, a lot of this information today, thank heavens, you can find this online. And this is very valuable information. So I encourage anybody that is planning for a camping trip, You know, just like you're planning the time off from work and you're planning your camp menu, take the extra moment to visit the website, especially if you have not been there before, and take a look and see what they have to offer, see what sites are available. If there's a phone number there, pick up the phone and make a phone call. And you probably even get a better description from the person who is there. So you want to make sure you get the absolute best camping experience Anytime you go camping, wherever that may be. Um, do you think it's reasonable to, um, like, say you're going, like, across the country and stuff, and instead of going to hotels, you go to campgrounds? I mean, I guess you should call ahead to those, too. But, I mean, sometimes you're like, oh, I feel I feel tired. I want to I wanna probably, you know, lay down for the night. I mean, I guess you really got to think about that. It's not, it's kind of like, it's not like a hotel. I mean, you really got to plan this stuff out like okay well we're going this far let's check to see where that will be when you know nighttime comes so we can maybe find a campground near there to set up because uh, we've done that a couple times and um you know we we have to call ahead to make sure because i mean it's like what you were saying before if you come to a campground like hey we're here you know we just need to stay the night and they say oh well we we don't have anything that that's that's not going to be good. <laughs> well, again, let's look at the accommodations that you have. If you're hauling a travel trailer, if you're hauling a fifth wheel, if you're driving a motorhome, in cases like that, you probably would slip into a roadside rest area mm-hmm. and park there for the night. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you're a guy like myself who hauls a trailer full of camping equipment with your tent and all, then, yeah, you're probably looking for a place that you want to go ahead and uh, call it a night. Um, you also got to be mindful too, that if you're bringing along a lot of gear, like myself, is that going to be secured at a hotel somewhere where you go in and crash for the night, you wake up in the morning and find out all your camping equipment is gone. So, you know, you got to, you know, weigh security in there too. Um, if you're going to plan a long distance trip like that, again, go that extra mile, allow yourself adequate time to get there because the last thing you want to do, Daniel is drive a long distance, burn yourself out, you know, and arrive at a campground where you're only going to be spending the night. You got to pitch the tent. You got to bring everything in and you got to pack it up again to go to the next day. 
the last thing you want to do when you arrive at your destination is is be tired to the point where you're just wore out. Yeah. You don't want that. <laughs> so that's why I say a lot of folks, and, and unless you you've got the type of a lifestyle where you can just pick up and go and time is always going to be on your side and you don't worry about what's going to happen, you know, when you get home or anything like that, you don't have a deadline, then you're, you're good to go. You can do just about anything you want. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to check the seven day forecast in the area you're going to be camping. And of course, I always use weather.gov. Uh, I used to promote it as NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration website. You know, then you have a link that takes you to weather.gov. But there you can enter the city, state, or zip code, and it'll give you the seven-day forecast of the area that you're going to be camping in. And this was something I was monitoring very carefully for the past couple weeks in the North Georgia mountains. And every day I looked at it, my stomach turned a little bit more. So, you know, and Daniel, like I says, it happens to me. Yeah. So, you know, we, we still got an early spring here. It's, it's a little on the chilly side. I actually took a walk over at Stone Mountain Park while I was there today. I went over and went across the covered bridge and uh, toured that little island over there. And it oh, was Indian a, Island, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was it was really nice. The only person I ran into over there is a police officer. <laughs> <laughs> now, she didn't give me a hard time. She was okay. really nice, in fact. But, um, yeah, Daniel, it was windy, it was cold, and it's not the best camping weather to be out in right now. Mm -hmm. I have been over there at times where the camping was just phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And and hopefully, you know, next time I do have an opportunity to get an extended weekend where I'm off like a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, then that will be an excellent time to get away. Because everything I have is organized. Everything is in the plastic totes. I can just load it in the truck and I can go. Kind of like yourself, you know, you if you have everything loaded inside that pop-up camper and it's, it's ready to just back your, your truck up like you did today mm -hmm. and haul it away, you had to go get some electric brakes on that, didn't you? I did. It's mm -hmm. still uh, getting worked on right now. <laughs> okay. But, I, I mean, it's, they, everyone says once you get electric brakes, you'll never, uh, you'll never go back. So I'm going to invest in that because we plan on having this for a while. But yeah. good. Yep. I remember the last one you had. Is this this looks like a little bit smaller than that one you had um, before? It's smaller, but it's taller. And the good thing about it is, um, we put it in the garage, so none of the weather gets to it. And I love mm -hmm. that so much. I yeah. think that's really important to keep it, it for all the people that have uh, pop ups. I would definitely suggest to keep it covered and keep it out of the elements as much as you can. Well, I can't wait for you to open that up again in your driveway and oh, have yeah. you and the wife give us the dime tour. There you go. You know, I was, I was over there with the camera one time and you know, I was like, come on over. And you were nowhere to be found. I was probably <laughs> sleeping. <laughs> no, no doubt about it. Like you are right now. Ah, <laughs> save, save, it for, save it for camp, Daniel. <laughs> ah, I'm just concentrating. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, wherever you plan on camping this summer, you know, if the, the bottom line here is take the time to do your research, do it upright. And if you can, like Daniel and I have talked about, visit the campground ahead of time. If it's not too far out of the way and select an individual site. The last time I was over at Stone Mountain, I actually looked at a couple different sites and I actually snapped a picture with my iPhone and I have them on file here. So, and that was a couple years ago, but all I've got to do now is just go into my picture library and find out what sites they were. But because the campground is so close, I can go over there and, you know, and just wander around a little bit and say, wow, okay. You know, being the fact that it's uh, kind of the off season right now, and I don't expect this spot to be reserved, I could probably go ahead and select it if I know for a fact that I'm going to go camping. So, you know, you've got, you've got a lot of different options. You know, make your reservations online if you possibly can, and you can do that with recreation.gov. If you go to the featured campground site or just go to the link that we have on happycamperradio.com. If you don't have an account already, go ahead and sign up for one. It doesn't cost you any money to do that. And if you're going to be using recreation.gov to go camping and using a lot of their different campgrounds, it makes your reservation process go so much smoother anytime you have a recreation.gov account. So, you know, Daniel, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's something to look forward to. I know you have a lot of camping plans ahead of you this coming year. Yes, sir. I do too. And I've got a lot of time off that I'm going to take advantage of. 
I'm not quite ready to retire yet. We've talked about that, but I've uh, I've got my plans in place, and hopefully real soon um, I'll be out the door with that camping equipment, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's time now for our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Happy Camper Radio. Happy Camper Radio. And this week, we're going to take you out to the state of Texas. Daniel, that's a little bit of a drive from here. Oh, yeah. But I do expect you to get out there someday. I was out there <laughs> last year. Good I for was, you. I was near Houston, so uh-huh. I'm, I'm not sure where this well, is. Well, this, this week, we're going to take you to Airport Park. It's part of Waco Lake, run by the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. It's a year-round campground. Airport Lake is perfectly located between Waco Lake and the Waco Airport. Now, here's what's interesting. Campers can look south and view the pristine waters of the lake. Sounds like something I would do. Or in a case like you, you can look north and watch the airplanes take off and land. There we go. (laughs) Right? Airport Lake is on the northern banks of Waco Lake near the dam. The lake is primarily fed by the Bostec River, which runs for 115 miles through central Texas. The main lake shoreline has a large amount of submersible timber, which typically holds fish year-round. Anglers will find plenty of catfish, crappie, large and smallmouth bass, as well as sunfish. I don't know what the fishing license requirements are in Texas, but you probably want to go ahead and research that as well. If you're an angler, bring your rod and reel along. When the weather warms up, the swimming beach, boat ramp, and dock will help visitors enjoy the lake. The group camping shelter is available for reservation and comes with a 6-foot grill, 12-foot serving bar, and 8 campsites with electric and water hookups. The group camping area fits about 80 guests. There's a lot of activities and amenities right there on their website, and we're going to have a link all week long on happycamperradio.com, so you definitely want to go ahead and check that out. Also, th- some know-before-you-go items. Off-road vehicles are not permitted. Check in at the gatehouse upon arrival. A liability waiver is going to be required for campers using the group shelter. Also, don't move firewood. Remember, protect your forest from those tree-killing pests by buying your firewood locally and burning it on site. For more information, visit don'tmovefirewood.org or visit the link on Happy Camper Radio. You'll find it right there. This is a wonderful camping destination if you happen to be traveling through Texas, if you happen to live out there and you're looking to go camping at a wonderful campground, consider Airport Park, Texas. It is our featured campground of the week here on the Happy Camper Radio Show. Skip Huber. Yeah. Of course, if you have a campground you would like for us to feature on the program, get in touch with me, Skip, S-K-I-P, at happycamperradio.com. Be sure to include a link to the campground website. Well, Daniel. Yes, sir. We got camping on our mind, don't we? Oh, definitely. (laughs) And we're going to have a lot of fun out there. A lot of pictures I'm going to be taking. I hope you get an opportunity to do the same wherever you go. Absolutely. Maybe we'll connect up, I'm sure. (laughs) Remember, friends, every pet deserves a loving home. I want you to do exactly like I did. Visit your local shelter and adopt a pet today. You can find us online 24 hours a day, seven days a week at www.happycamperradio.com. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter at Camp Talker. Add us to Circles on Google+. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. The Happy Camper Radio Show is a presentation of Skip Uber Productions. I'm Skip. I am a happy camper. Daniel's a happy camper. And no question about it, my friends, you hang around with us long enough. We will make a happy camper out of you. Talk to you again real soon. You're listening to Happy Camper Radio.